Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. Today's video is going to be a book haul, but before we get into the books, I wanted to do a joke. What did one plate say to the other plate? Lunch is on me. <laughs> Wonderful. So hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Again, today's video is going to be a book haul. And it's basically just a book haul, but I am going to put in a little montage of me and Elias Reads shopping at Green Apple Books in San Francisco because I got some of the books in this book haul from that shopping trip. And admittedly, my plan was to do like a whole like weekend vlog that started off with shopping with Elias on a Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday rolled around and I didn't vlog. And then Elias posted his vlog from that day. And it's gorgeous. It's one of the prettiest book shopping videos I've ever seen in my life. It is so, so good. His camera quality, the ambiance of the day, and just his overall editing is stunning. So instead of giving you like the discount version of that video because there's no way my video could compare to his. I'm going to link that video down below and put it in the cards as well as just Elias's Instagram and channel. Uh, please follow him, please subscribe to him. I love him so much. He's one of the nicest people I know. So instead of giving you the half off version of Elias's gorgeous video, I'm just gonna give you a couple minute montage because it was still a really, really fun day and I got some really cool shots. So I'm gonna give you a little montage of Green Apple Books in San Francisco um, with Elias. And then I'm just gonna do a big book haul from books that I got that day, but then also books that have just been sent to my PO box or from publishers or just books that I've picked up over the last month or so. And so let's get into the little montage and then I'll do the book haul. Here we go. What are we looking for today, Elias? for Pieces by Helen Oyemi. I'm also looking for, let me refer to my Amazon wish list. <laughs> <laughs> I am looking for Every Value Break by Pierre Swanson. Um, A Perfect Understanding by Claire Chambers. Norwegian Wood. Um, and A 100 Years of Solitude by Gabrielle Garc y Marquez. There you go. That's a damn good list. We're here to tell you that we wish you were here. We love you. And we love you. We will make it in our absolute Oh my god, one a day. trip to London? Oh That'll my god. That'll be the day. The three of us in London. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that little montage. I love making little montages, so I hope it was fun. But again, I will link Elias's version down below because it's spectacular, seriously. I love him so much. His editing is incredible in that video. And yeah, so I'll link that down below. And now let's get into the book haul. So some are gonna be from that book shopping trip and then others are just gonna be birthday gifts or P.O. box or publishers or books that I've just picked up. And the first one we're gonna start with is How to Fail at Flirting. This was a gift from my friend Jess Decker, who makes amazing book themed embroidery patterns. Um, she's gifted me two so far and they're incredible. So I will link her down below to check out her embroidery work. It's amazing, I love her so much. So I've had my eye on this romance for a while and I'm so glad that Jess sent it to me. It was such a fun little birthday surprise. And from what I understand, it's about this woman named Naya who is a professor at a university and something goes wrong in her department. And so her friends convince her to go have a night on the town and she ends up meeting someone on this night and I think some flirting ensues. And so it's just this fun romance. Although I do hear it's not super light. 
at all points in the novel. I have heard there's a little bit of trauma in it. So I would definitely look up the content warnings for this. I haven't read it, so I don't know exactly what happens, but I have heard that it's a little heavier than just like a cute little romance. So I'm really excited to get to this one. I've heard some really great things about it. So thank you again, Jess, for sending this to me. The next book I picked up, this was from Recycle Books a few weeks ago, and it is Red at the Bone. First of all, this cover is striking to me. I love the color blocking. I think it looks amazing. Um, and from what I understand, it's about a 16 year old pregnancy that brings two families from different social classes together. Um, and it kind of gives me the mother's storyline-esque. And I've heard that although it's a really so short book, it actually packs a really big punch. And so I'm really, really excited to read this. I think Kat gave it a four or five out of five. Um, she said it was excellent on her channel. So I'm really excited to get to this one. The cover has caught my eye so many times over the last few months. So I'm really excited to get to this. The next book is from a publisher and it's Caledon Books or Celadon books. I'm leaning more towards Celadon, C-E-L-A-D-O-N, Celadon books, but they were super sweet to send this to me. And it is Finding Freedom, a cook story, remaking a life from scratch, a memoir. And I think it's literally that. It's a memoir told from like a cooking kitchen perspective. Um, and I love a good memoir. And I've also talked about how much I love like restaurant fiction or books that have a lot of cooking or, you know, just cooking. That's literally what I meant. So yeah, just a lot of cooking in it. So to read a memoir that's based in cooking sounds really, really great. And the cover looks amazing. I love the flowers. It's so striking. Oh my God, and look at the back. Wow, look at how gorgeous that is. Wow, okay, well, really, really exciting. Again, thank you so much for sending this to me. Celadon, Celadon Books, thank you so much. All right, the next book I picked up a couple weeks ago from Recycle Books is the smallest and shortest book I might own, and that is The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. This is the same author that wrote Gone Girl, Sharp Objects, and Dark Places. Um, I think it's one, no, I think it's a collection of short stories, or maybe it's just one short story. I guess that makes more sense. Um, but you know, it's going to be a little mystery. I think it might be Haunted House-esque, um, but I really just wanted, I've loved this cover of this book for so long, and I really love Sharp Objects and Gone Girl, so I'm really excited to read this, and I've heard some... I mean, I don't know if I've heard fantastic things about it, but I think it's like good for being such a short story, you know? So excited to get to this one. And again, just really love this cover. Okay, so this is a book that I picked up on that book shopping trip with Elias, and it is called Oakland Noir. I had never heard of this book, but there was a whole section, like a whole mystery section at Green Apple. And there was like a San Francisco Noir, Berkeley Noir, Oakland Noir, and I saw this one first. And it just looked amazing, because I think it's all, the way that it's described is that it's like all noir short stories, but that the city of Oakland is like a character in the story. It's not just the setting. It feels like a character that like is interacting with all the other characters. And I thought that sounded beautiful and like poetic. And so I picked it up. I was taking a noir class that I unfortunately had to drop because of how much last semester was, but uh, we had to read some noir fiction and it was really fun. And so I just feel like I'm gonna really appreciate this. And if it ends up being amazing, I'm going to recommend it to that professor. So let's hope it's fantastic. All right, this next book, I might have already talked about briefly in another vlog. I'm not sure, but basically this person named Sam sent me this really cool edition of the Maltese Falcon to my PO box. And it looks like this and it's amazing. It's such a cool edition. The back is this really cool purple. So thank you so much, Sam, for sending this to me. I was just looking at my used book collection and I was like, this is incredible. So thank you so much, Sam, for sending this to me. And I'm sorry if I've already talked about this one, but I saw it and I was like, Worth mentioning mentioning again. I mean, why not? So thank you so much, Sam. All right, these next two books are another pair of used books that were sent to my P.O. box from a woman named Ashlyn. And we have Children of Dune and we have Dune Messiah. 
and I have not read Dune yet. I was going to read it at the end of 2020, but then the movie release got pushed to 2021 and I want to read it right before the movie comes out. So I haven't read Dune yet. Um, I have a feeling that I'm really going to like it. And so Ashlyn reached out to me on Instagram and was like, Hey, I have these cool used copies of Dune or parts of the series of Dune. Are you interested? And I was like, yes, I am. So thank you so much, Ashlyn, for sending these to me. I think that the copies look amazing. I mean, it's like so, so, so cool. I love it so much and I can't wait to read Dune. So thank you so much. All right, next. We have a book I am so excited for, but I don't want to start it until my semester ends because it's kind of long and I know it's going to distract me from my schoolwork. And that is Say Nothing, A True Story of Murder and Memory in Northern Ireland. One of my really good friends, August, recommended this to me. It sounds amazing. It just explores the history of the IRA and the troubles in Northern Ireland. It looks like in the 1970s and it follows these two twins who are part of the IRA and you know, it's Irish history. I'm very proud of being Irish and it just sounds amazing. And it was also the New York Times book review, 10 best books of 2019. So really, really excited. And she also said, August also said that it's not just like a history book that's kind of dense. It's actually like told in a very cool story-like way. Um, and so I'm really excited to get to this. Again, I'm gonna wait until my semester ends. So you will see this on a future TBR, but so, so, so excited. I hear it's amazing. All right, this next book was sent to me by Melissa to my PO box. So thank you so much, Melissa. And it is Mr. Penimbra's 24 hour bookstore. And from what I understand, first of all, let me just say, I love when you're in a bookstore, cause I've seen this out in the world before, when you're in a bookstore and you see a book that says bookstore on it. I don't know, it's instantly eye grabbing and it's also yellow. So you know I'm intrigued. So what I understand about this book, the great recession has shuffled clay away from life as a San Francisco web design drone and into the aisles of Mr. Penenbra's 24 hour bookstore. It's super curious and people aren't really buying anything. They're checking out large obscure volumes from strange corners of the store. So it sounds like there's something mysterious or magical going on. Um, and this guy has to investigate this cool bookstore. Sounds really fun to me. Can't wait to get to it. All right, this next book I am so excited for because Jesse from Bowties and Books talked about it. And I believe they gave it a five out of five or a really high rating. I remember them saying they really liked it. I'm almost positive they said they really liked it. Cause I remember when I saw that, I was like, well, if Jesse liked it, I'm gonna like it. And so I picked it up and it is Hamnet. I might be wrong on this, but my understanding is that it has to do with the Black Plague and Shakespeare's son, I believe. Maybe it just gives like Shakespeare vibes. So maybe I'm getting that wrong, but if anything, most of what I've seen online about this book is super positive. Um, it's a little long, but that the writing is beautiful and that you get really invested in the characters and the story. Um, and I also think I saw someone say that there's like a little bit of a slow start, but once the story really gets going, you don't want to put it down. And so, I mean, if Jesse said it was amazing, <laughs> I trust them wholeheartedly. So I picked it up, love the cover, and just really excited to get to this one. So yeah. <laughs> All right, the next book looks incredible. Not only does the story sound super interesting, but the actual book design is genuinely one of the coolest book designs I've ever seen in my life. I'm not even being sarcastic. I think it is absolutely stunning. And that is Yoke. So we have on the front cover, we have one sister holding hands. Do you see the hands? I hope it's focusing, but there's hands on the actual pages with another sister. Are you seeing this? Incredible, the spine is incredible. It just, it looks amazing. It's about these two sisters, Jane and June, um, and they kind of grow apart. I guess they were really close when they were younger. They grow apart as they grow older. And then one of the sisters get, gets cancer and the other sister is one of the only people that can help from what I'm understanding. And so, um, 
I mean, it sounds devastating. It sounds like really cool sibling discussion um, and just family dynamics, which also sounds incredible. And so I'm so excited to get to this one. The cover is genuinely exceptional. One of my favorite covers of all time. It's striking. I love it. All right, this next book is another book I picked up on that book shopping trip with Elias, and that is Freshwater by Akwake Amezi. This is the same author that wrote The Death of Vivek Oji, which I read in January of this year and sobbed, sobbed. It was beautiful, so heartbreaking, so many layers of the story, but so easy to follow in my opinion. It was incredibly done, like truly a piece of fictional artwork. I did that even make sense? I don't think so, but it really is. I feel like it should it should win awards. I thought it was wonderful. And so when I saw this at Green Apple, immediately bought one. Me and Elias both bought one. And it says, young Ada is troubled, prone to violent fits. Born with one foot on the other side, she begins to develop separate selves within her as she grows into adulthood. And when she travels to America for college, a traumatic event on campus crystallizes the selves into something powerful and potentially dangerous. Anyone who has talked about this book has said it's good, at least from what I've seen. Um, and if the writing is anything like The Death of Vivek OG, it is going to get a five out of five for me. I can already feel it. I think it's going to be exceptional. I cannot wait to start it. And I think I also was able to find the audiobook on Libby. So really excited to get to this one. I just love their writing so much. All right, another book that I picked up on that book shopping trip is The Marriage Plot. It is Brown University 1982, Madeline Hanna, dutiful English student and incurable romantic is writing her thesis on Jane Austen and George Eliot, author of Great Marriage Plots. As Madeline studies the age old motivations of the human heart, real life in the form of two very different men intervenes. Sounds amazing, to be honest, because I've read both Jane Austen and George Eliot, and I'll have to read them for my master's degree. And it just, you know, it sounds amazing. I think it sounds really fun. It sounds like not really like a lighthearted romance, but there will be romance, almost a little bit like writers and lovers. But I didn't really know anything about this. I hadn't seen anyone talk about it. And if maybe I forgot, I'm not sure, but excited to get to it. Sounds right up my alley. All right, this next book I had had my eye on for a long time and I it was sold out when I went to go actually buy it and then it just found its way into my life. I was at Target, I saw it and I said, you're coming home with me. And that is maybe you should talk to someone. I'm unsure if this is a novel or if it's like a memoir from a therapist who worked in Los Angeles. I'm having a hard time because like I thought it was definitely a memoir or like a self-help book. But then when I'm reading the synopsis, it kind of looks like it's fictional or maybe it's gonna read like fiction, but it is actually real. So if you've read this, please let me know, first of all, what you rated it. And then is it nonfiction or is it fiction? I'm gonna read it and enjoy it either way. Um, but I've seen it everywhere. Oh, therapist, her therapist and our lives revealed. That doesn't actually help me very much. I feel like it is nonfiction. So if you've read it, please let me know. Also let me know if you liked it, loved it, didn't love it, um, but no spoilers, please. So there we go. I also just think that the cover looks really great. <laughs> so yeah. All right, this next book was sent to me by a publisher and it's it came with a little thing and that is The Savage Instinct. And it looks amazing. I mean, look at that cover. It looks so cool. And what it says here is set in the late 19th century, this chilling novel journeys into the dark and desperate mind of a woman with nothing left to lose. So that sounds so good to me. Thank you so much to Inkshares for sending this to me. It sounds creepy. It sounds Victorian. It sounds Gothic. It sounds right up my alley. So very, very excited. And thank you again for sending this to me. <laughs> All right, next up, I picked up my first two ever Murakami novels. I've really, really wanted used copies of his books because his current, like the current printings of all of his novels are these like really shiny and like slippery 
neon covers. And I was just like desperately looking for some used copies. Like anytime I go to a used bookstore, I've been looking and they only have those like really shiny slippery ones. And so I picked up The Wind Up Bird Chronicles and South of the Border, West of the Sun. So if you've read either of these, please let me know what you thought. And if you have any other favorite Murakami, please let me know what I should read next. I've heard some really great things about his writing. So let me know what you thought. Really excited. And again, these covers are incredible. And I got them at Green Apple in San Francisco. All right, next I picked up Taylor Jenkins Reid's Forever Interrupted. I have read Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, there it is. And I didn't know that she had written like just kind of a general romance. And so I saw it and I thought the little like tulips on the bike looked really cool. And I was like, whatever. So it's Elise Porter is an average 20 something. And yet what happens to her is anything but ordinary. On a rainy New York, New Year's day, she heads out to pick up a pizza for one. She isn't expecting to see anyone else in the shop, much less the adorable and charming Ben Ross. Their chemistry is instant and electric. So it sounds like it's just like a fun little romance. And I haven't read any other books by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So if you've read this, let me know what you thought because it sounds like a cute little springtime romance. I mean, the cover is definitely giving me springtime. So let me know what you thought. All right, the next book I picked up was another book that me and Elias bought. Like we both bought a copy of Freshwater and then we both bought a copy of The Sympathizers and we found these really great condition used copies, which was amazing. Again, another reason why I love Green Apple so many beautiful used editions. So, so excited for this. And on the back it says, the narrator, a communist double agent is a man of two minds, a half French, half Vietnamese army captain who arranges to come to America after the fall of Saigon and while building a new life with other Vietnamese refugees in Los Angeles is secretly reporting back to his communist superiors in Vietnam. I mean, you see these two gold awards, right? Like it sounds so good. I'm so excited. I've been seeing this cover everywhere and I just didn't know what it was about. And then Elias explained it to me and I was like buying it immediately. So, so glad we got matching copies. Let me know if you read this. What did you rate it? It's gotten some awards. It sounds super interesting. So I'm really excited to read this one. All right, next. I have another book from Jess for my birthday, and that is Bear Town. And I believe this is one of her favorite books and it made her cry. But from what I understand, it's just about this like small town that has this ice hockey team that is um, going into the semifinals for some competition. But it's really about like the bonds of a small community and like this cool, like, I don't think the sports aspect is like center. Like, I don't think you need to like know hockey super well to read this book. Um, and if you do, I'm about to learn. Um, but um, I hear it's really fun and people cry over Bachman's writing and I love crying in my reading experiences. So really excited to get to this one. And again, thank you so much, Jess, for sending this to me. All right, friends, we have two books left. This next book is the book I keep almost starting and then I stop myself because it's our May book club pick for the late night book club. And that is The House in the Cerulean Sea. This is one of Elias's favorite books of all time. He did a reading vlog on it, which was amazing. He cried and he doesn't cry a lot during his reading experiences. And so when he cried over this, I was like, I need to read it. And so it's our May book club pick. We announced it over on our Instagram, the late night book club Instagram. And I'm so, so, so excited to get to this one. I really hope it makes me cry. Whenever I talk about this book, people say it is fantastic. And also that it'll make me cry. And I'm so excited for it. So can't wait to get to this one. Can't wait to discuss it on Joel's channel in May. So there we go. All right, the last book on this book list is Kristen Hanna's The Great Alone. I have read three of Kristen Hanna's books so far and they always make me cry. And I've heard some really, really good ones about this one. Um, I mainly just know that it takes place in Alaska in the 70s. Um, and I don't love to know too much about Kristen Hanna's books before I start reading them. I usually don't like knowing basically anything about most of the books that I start reading, um, but I am really excited to get to this one. I found it 
as a used copy at Recycle Books. And I was like, you're coming home with me. So a lot of people have told me it's fantastic and that it's made them cry. So I'm ready for it. And there we have it, my friends. That is my book haul plus my little book shopping montage with Elias. I hope this was fun. Let me know what books you've picked up recently or books that you've loved recently. I would love to know because I would always love to buy more books, <laughs> especially used books from Recycle Books or Green Apple Books, both amazing used bookstores in the Bay Area. If you live here or end up visiting here, those are some of my favorite used bookstores. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.